Greetings, Earthlings, Wisdom Keepers, Wisdom Seekers. Welcome back to Wisdom Drops, your source for dead drops of wisdom and savvy cat astrology. My name is Tanya, and today we are discussing the Virgo full moon happening on February 27th, 2021. By the end of this video, you will have an overview of what celestial activity is going on and what you can expect from it. Where are the opportunities under this Virgo full moon energy? Where are the challenges? We will discuss it all. This is not the individual horoscope signs, but this is a foundation for you to understand everything related to all of your different horoscope signs. So I highly recommend you watch this video. Okay, I will be referring back to this, so um, FYI. Before I jump into it and share the chart with you, a couple of quick announcements. Number one, if you're not already subscribed to this YouTube channel, what is you doing? I'm here for you every day of the week. All you need to do is subscribe and hit that bell button so that you get the upload notification when it comes out. Next thing is like this video because it's a cool way to support the natural dissemination of knowledge for no money in exchange and just grow conscious community of people who like to have these types of conversations, okay? So support the channel by simply hitting the like button when this video brings you value as if it hasn't already. <laughs> Okay, awesome. Last but not least, if you want a reading from me, I do book those and I am accepting new clients on a rolling basis. So there is a little bit of a wait time at any given point in time, but I do um, get back to you fairly quickly. So be sure to utilize the email address in the description box if you are looking to initiate said services. Beautiful. Okay, now let's look at the chart and see what is going on for this Virgo full moon. I'm very much so looking forward to. So this is, as I said, on February 27th of 2021, and it's happening at eight degrees of Virgo. So it's happening on the eight degree axis of Pisces and Virgo. The sun is conjunct or co-present with Venus gorgeous does anybody remember the new moon that we're literally just now coming off of where it was conjunct venus and jupiter okay in aquarius just saying is there a venus theme hell yes goddess yes heaven yes there is a venus theme to this lunation cycle as i explained in my aquarius new moon video new moons and full moons are like yins and yangs they're like forks and food and spoons and vegan ice cream you know what i'm saying they just go together because like a new moon is a beginning and a full moon is a conclusion or a culmination is a better way of thinking about it. Because although sometimes culminations are concluding, they're always part of larger cycles. That's why moon cycles wax. They grow, they grow, they grow. And then they culminate. It's like, oh, in the glory. And then they wane. They go, they go, they go. You see? So they grow, they grow, they grow. They, oh, and then they go, they go, they go. So it's like a wane wax, a wax wane all the time, everything. Now, with that said, Venus is at the parte, okay, in both of these lunation instances, at the beginning and at the culmination. So all that to say, we should pay attention. And what else is beautiful and exciting about this, do you ask? Great question. Venus loves being in Pisces. Congratulations to everybody on planet Earth. Because Venus is now in super solid dignity. She loves being in Pisces. She's freshly entered Pisces. So she's happy to be there, getting her feet wet, so to speak, in the oceanic bliss of Piscean vibes. And she's conjunct the sun. What I love about this full moon is that while Venus is conjunct the sun, she has a four degree orb of buffer. Now, if you know anything about planetary conjunctions when it comes to the sun, the sun will burn literally any planet that is exactly conjunct it. So if we were to speed this ahead and see where Venus is exactly conjunct the sun, that would be more of a like, ouch, like she's getting burnt, but there's still benefits to be had. But in this sort of situation, Venus is, has a four degree buffer. So she's still kind of like just blissing out over the fact she's in Pisces at this time. She's not like, oh my God, I'm being burnt by this insane fire that is the divine universal force of spirit. You know what I mean? So all that to say, um, Venus is in super gorgeous energy and she's in opposition with the moon. 
but she is conjunct the sun. To me, this is like Venus, the divine goddess, right? She is with source, the sun, emanating out on this moon. The moon is a receptive force at any given point in time. The moon is just is energy. It's like a lake or a pond or an ocean. It represents water, right? It represents consciousness. Okay. It represents soul and spirit. Okay. So it just is, it's like this reflective pool of like is dumb. <laughs> um, and so the moon is like this receptive pool in this way for this opposing, uh, activation that it's receiving through venus and the sun and every full moon looks like this where the sun is opposite the moon because that's why it's full the sun shines a light like a flashlight you get it so with that said though venus is there to send that vibe to the moon now this isn't a conjunction it's an opposition so venus is trying to wake up the moon that's my functioning philosophical interpretation of this astrological event yeah say her and that is to say that Venus is like, hey, everybody's collective consciousness in Virgo under this Virgo full moon. What is you doing to bring pleasure into your life? No, really, though, what is you doing to bring pleasure into your life? Because Virgo is a solution based energy. Virgo is a solutionist, the master solutionist, in fact, as Virgo is ruled by Mercury, the solutionist planet, and conjunct, excuse me, not conjunct, it is ruled by Mercury, Virgo, that is as a sign, and is, in fact, an earth sign. So you put an earth sign, earth people do not F around, earth people do not got time for BS that don't hold up. You see what I'm saying? If it ain't sturdy, it ain't happening in an earth person's kind of world. If you're a Taurus, a Capricorn, or a Virgo, you know exactly what I'm talking about, okay? Now, with that said, Virgo is, again, Mercury ruled. So it's the solutionist of things holding up. And the moon is our collective consciousness, which is full at this point in time and in opposition with Venus. You understand why I'm saying this now? Venus is like, hello, moon can we please really bring pleasure into our lives like practically speaking virgo is the queen or the king of practicality if it ain't practical and solving in nature virgo do not have the time of effing day okay so venus is like the pleasure and um mercury ruled virgo is like the solutionist so the consciousness is being asked to bring in the pleasure through some type of solution, Mercury, Earth sign, Virgo. Okay. And that's my story and I'm sticking to it. That is what the heavens are telling us. Now let's go through the challenges because I promised you we would. Mars is causing a ruckus. Who's causing a ruckus? No surprise, it's Mars. Why is Mars causing a ruckus? Well, if we look here at the different aspects going on, um, you can see that Venus and Mars are squaring. And so this is um, not the tightest orb that we're experiencing this aspect under, but it is still a square. And these are the two passion planets. So don't be falling into arguments about critiquing details that are not serving your pleasure concept. Try turning that activation energy, Turn, use it by all means, please use it. Because if this is a Virgo full moon, y'all, if you ain't expressing the nuances of what is right or wrong with your life, you is not using this energy. Virgo wants you to make lists. Please make a list. Please make lists under this moon. Make yourself lists, take down some documentations. Mercury is the planet that rules Virgo and it rules pens, it rules pencils, it rules drafting, it rules writing, it rules typing, okay? And it rules... Uh, keeping things in lists and keeping things truncated into sensible formats. That is what Virgo energy symbolizes. So use that to your advantage in regard to actively constructing what needs to happen, list, 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 in order for me to experience true happiness because Mars is squaring that. Understand, Mars is squaring that. And that means Mars is, is activating, it's aggravating Venus. It's like getting under your seat. It's like princess in the pea, like Venus in this gorgeous castle of Pisces. Love it. Great dignity, you know, awesome. But she's square Mars. Mars is there to, to mess shit up. He's making a fire and clinging around and there's a bunch of pans and just making a mess and pissing Venus off. It's like, what do I need to do to get some peace? And that's what you're called to write down lists. You're called to problem solve. Mercury ruled 
earth sign, Virgo. You're called to put this into healthy, holistic, practical action that will actually result in a solution. Constructive action, key words of the lunation cycle that bring pleasure. It's all about the pleasure. This whole month is about our understanding of what it means to be truly pleasure. And please understand there's deeper levels than shallow experiences of that energy. There's something as basic as food that is pleasurable as is um, good blankets. You know what I mean? Like good tea, um, good, like, uh, massages, good intimate experiences, whatever the case may be. There's a lot of different good relationship embodiment, like friendship can happen over the phone, but that experience is Venusian. You understand now with that Mars there to aggravate everything it's saying, but there's more energy that we need to deal with. And so there is an aggravation. It is not all rainbows and smooth sunshine. And I'm encouraging you to challenge yourself to get proactive and pragmatic with it. Now there's one more key point for what we can do with this energy that I wanna discuss with you before you leave out of this um, debrief with me on this lunation event. And that is the dispositor of the moon. It's very relevant and very important that we pay attention to this to better understand what this lunation really is about. Now look, dispositor is a fancy ass word. You know what it means? It means the planetary ruler of this planet that is transiting this sign. In other words, uh, the moon is in the sign of Virgo. What planet rules Virgo? That planet is the dispositor. That planet is, as I've said about 12 times now, Mercury. So Mercury, okay, is the ruler of the moon in this full moon chart. And Mercury will tell us much more about the energetic experience we are likely to have as a result. So Mercury is currently forward moving. Does anybody see this like playing out? Mercury was just retrograde, not even two weeks ago when this was a new moon we were looking at. You understand? Now Mercury is ready to go forward. Now Mercury is like, let's go full speed ahead. You know, we got things to do. We got things to put into place regarding the society stuff, regarding this network stuff, which we talked in depth about in the Aquarius new moon video. I don't want to take up time for it here. Please refer back to that video for more details about what I'm saying. But Mercury is still engaged in a square with Uranus. This is another reason why I'm encouraging you to be so constructively proactive because Virgo is the solver of energy. Do not get caught in this bitchy, pissy, uncomfortable, like, raw rage of Venus square Mars. And you know what? Mercury is squaring Uranus, which is ripe for epiphanies. Mercury is considered to be the foundational energy of Uranus. So Uranus is like the higher octave of mercurial energy. And so they're very related. There's an affinity. There's something super similar about Mercury and Uranus. Understand, these are almost reflections of each other. And they're squaring each other through the fixed signs of Aquarius and Taurus. And so this is going to be, um, I think, showing us uh, where we are in need of advancing at an earthly plane through connecting our social systems with it. So I wouldn't be surprised if there was some big environmental news that hit the ground about like how we're treating the earth and how it's connected to society at this time. I would love to know if those headlines are coming out, please comment on this video and you'd be like, hey, did you hear about X, Y, and Z? And I'd be like, oh my gosh, I didn't, but now I did, thanks to you. <laughs> now, um, the other thing, just like allow this energy is what I'm gonna say to um, be enlightening and revelatory. This is epiphany energy. Mercury is the ruler of this moon. It has extra importance. This is extra skin in the game, okay? And it's telling us awakening epiphany revelation is available now, and it might not be comfortable to get there because it's a square. It might take struggle. It might take argument at a lower vibration or heated debate, spirited debate. And it's in fixed signs. So it can be very, uh, people being very fixed and rooted in their ways. And through this being very fixed and rooted in their ways, there is this revelation that takes place in regard to social and earthly systems, okay? Uh, Aquarius and Taurus. So, wow, what a jam-packed, I mean, really, what a jam-packed, interesting, intriguing, uh, lunation event. I love that Venus is making a sextile to Uranus. That's just really encouraging this genius awakening kind of energy that I spoke of with the high potential of Mercury square uh, Uranus 
And, you know, Neptune is doing really lovely things with Pluto and Pluto is doing really lovely things with Mars. So if you're a Scorpio, just a little nugget for all the Scorps out there. Oh, wow. Good for you because your two rulers, your ancient ruler, Mars, and your modern ruler is are in harmonious conversations. But, you know, you don't have to be a Scorpio to benefit from that because that means that our willpower and like our direction, our target GPS, like our aim is going to be a little more intuitively supported. I would say, I would say a lot more intuitively supported because action is Mars. And while it's not in the best dignity in the sign of Taurus and yeah, is squaring Venus, the host of Mars, since Mars is in Taurus, a Venus ruled sign, still Venus, excuse me, Mars is being supported by Pluto, as you can see, and um, Neptune is supporting that Pluto. So Pluto in Capricorn is really making some powerful gestures to our willpower. So this is our transformation power, and this is our willpower. And this down here is our intuition power. So our intuitive kind of like willpower, force, structure, um, of like will and, and might and spirituality, that whole construct is elevated. Um, so with this Venus influence and with this really beautiful kind of like trifecta energy we just went through here between Pluto, Neptune and Mars, I think this is a really elevating potential. This whole lunation cycle from the new moon to the full moon, it's really juicy. Venus is engaged at key points, key conversations. Jupiter is as well because Jupiter is the ruler of Pisces. Neptune's the modern ruler. Guess who came before Neptune? Jupiter. So Jupiter is in, a, yet again the host of the sun, the host of Venus um, under this under this lunation. So really positive stuff, I think. I think this is going to be a positive lunation. Please let me know, as always, what is playing out in your life. I love hearing real stories about different people's lives and how this astrology reading fits in. It's so fun, and I think it's fun for all of us in this community to witness each other's experiences. And so with that said, um, if you are interested in booking your reading, again, my email is in the description box. Like this video because you know it brings you value and it's worth sharing. Put a comment, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and with that said, through next time, until next time, may the stars be with you. Peace.